So, but uh, you know, the real winner of the election. God you see what I'm teeing up as oh, yeah. ever is a little known organization by the name of the American Israelis action affairs. No, I'm getting it wrong. I don't know what the, that was a hell the of acronym an intro. stands for. It's, it's, <laughs> that was a hell of an intro. <laughs> that was a hell of an intro. And you Thank ruined you. It. I do my best. The American, the American Israel yeah. public affairs Commit- committee, which was founded in 1951. Yeah. And JFK was going to force them to, to sign up as foreign agents, and then he gets shot. Um, I mean, you know, what a uh, coincidence! Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, that, I mean, you know, it is it is a anti-Semitic conspiracy theory to say that they have this huge in, influence uh, over U.S. politics, or is it, Alex? What's well, the truth, if you're, there, my friend? You're APAC, then uh, no, it's not. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and play the video. It's infusion of foreign affairs that's taking the 2024 race into an entirely new phase. I'm a firm believer that no candidate wins an election on their own. What I love about APAC is that they get behind people in the room. APAC comes in, it's like someone threw you a life raft. This week, the group secured its first major victory of the election season. Fresh off of that victory, APAC has already set sights on its next target. Well, you know what we got to say to APAC? Bring it on! The results are in. George Latimer defeats incumbent Jamal Bowman. Incumbent Republican Bob Good has been defeated by challenger State Senator John McGuire. Missouri Democratic Congresswoman Cori Bush, known for being part of the squad, will no longer serve in Congress next year. To folks in the pro-Israel community, we have no choice but to stay engaged and stay in this fight. I just want to extend my sincere gratitude to this community for helping me get to Congress and and assure everybody that you're going to have a a long-term friend. How is that not a parody? How is that not a I know, parody? right? It's, men- it's mental. It's mental. Yeah. And, you know, oh s- speaking God. of foreign meddling. It's unreal. So, <laughs> APAC endorsed 362 candidates and won in every primary. We had a candidate on the ballot. I love how they say we had. Like, they own them. They, they're they admitting it, you know? They do. Um, they do. You told me, you told me that every, like, or, like every, it's every lawmaker in the U.S. has their own APAC taking... handler. Every, well, that was revealed US by law... Thomas Massey. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. And I, I, yeah, I can't believe that's not a parody. Uh, yeah, no, I, that, Jesus Christ. I mean, if you go down to the, I didn't, I hadn't seen this video before. If you, yeah, I had seen this report, it's, it's called, um, a, it's uh, APAC on how they influence politics and policy in 2022. And it has all of these funky graphics and boasts about how they basically, like, you know, got billions for Israel's quote unquote security, in other words, to genocide Palestinians and all of the stuff that they, they got investment for. And then you go to the next page and it's and it openly states keeping Congress pro Israel. APAC is the largest yeah. pro, pro largest pro Israel pack. Like zoom in on this stuff. It's mental. 98% of APAC back candidates won. Yeah. Like, like, and, like, that's insane. More money to candidates oh than God. any other pack in the country. So These you have people are insane. Oh, so you have APAC at 17.5 million and then Emily's list at 8.7 million. I think Emily's list is a woman's pro-choice group. J Street <laughs> at number three. So, you know, there's Legal speaking of overrepresentation. 
the League of, of Conservation Voters. What? I've never yeah. heard of these people. What? And they yeah. donate nothing. Oh my God. Congressional Black Caucus, more than 2.5 yeah. million support was distributed to the Black Caucus members through APAC. Yeah. 89. A APAC, APAC supported 89% of the members of the Republican Study Committee. What the fuck? Yeah. The largest conduit contributor to current and prospective Hispanic caucus members. They're trying to get it all sewn up. It's crazy. Israel yeah. is like the most racist country on earth by far. And they're like trying to get the, like the, the people of color on board with Zionism. Yeah. It's insane. And it's and it's openly advertised, very oh. openly, very openly. And I mean, uh, two of the two of the people that they were able to get rid of, Jamal Bowman and Corey Bush. Hmm. You know, say what you will about them. I'm not. I'm not certainly not their biggest fan. I think uh, the Gray Zone had an excellent interview with Jamal Bowman where he. I think he didn't. What what was it? Crimea. He didn't know. Uh, where Crimea was, uh, so something like that. Uh, some basic, fundamental yeah. ignorance displayed on 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 the proxy war in Ukraine, and he was started raving about how Putin was a a madman. Um, but you know, say what you will about him, he and Cory Bush were both uh, staunch opponents of Zionist influence, and uh, they paid the price for it. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you know I. I think they could have done better on, but they were mm. models for resisting the uh, the APEC yeah. agenda yeah. control. If nothing else, um... and now and now you know it's like we have people like Richie Torres, who um, you know I suspect there's compromat on him, <laughs> but I, I know never... there is. I'm just I'm just waiting to get it leaked to me. I know, yeah. <laughs> I know it's out there. Like, 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 it's like, it's like when RFK Jr. like came all out like in favor of Israel, and it's like you got to know that there are tapes of him having sex with children, like somewhere for him to, for him to be so like balls to the wall. You're gonna get like, us in like, trouble, my friend. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well, and, and you know, big, we it's learned go, it's go big, it's go big or go home at this point, my friend. So um, yeah. why not? But like, yeah. Well, we learned recently uh, that uh, Donald Trump and Jeffrey Epstein were Eskimo brothers, Absolutely. Um, reportedly dating the same supermodel at the same time back in the 80s. Um, I don't know if that's true. There's reporting on it. So, you know, take it with it. Was it was the 80s, man. It was the 80s. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> in New York. Like, come on. Like, Yeah. <laughs> well, apparently their falling out was because uh, uh, one of them wanted to buy a property in Florida. I think it was Trump wanted to buy a property in Florida and consulted Epstein. And uh, and Epstein wound up outbidding Trump. And so they've been bitter enemies ever since. And um, apparently in interviews uh, before his death, he was quite afraid of the Donald um and the retribution he would enact as president lo and behold he winds up dying in a manhattan <laughs> prison um or did with he? the <laughs> or did yeah right <laughs> so uh yeah i mean i i that's uh these are quite the admissions um and yeah. don't you dare say that we have a zionist occupied government that's anti-semitism no. um no. Unless you're APAC, then you can go right ahead. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.